All right then gang, so currently we're using Firebase Auth to sign users up. And on the Auth service, we can store different information about that user. For example, we have a user ID. We can store the email and access the email. We did that in the last video. We can also store a photo URL and a display name, plus a couple of other things. But if we want to store any kind of custom data, any larger data, for example, a biography, we need to store that in a separate location. In our case, we're going to store it inside the Firestore database inside a user's collection. So we're going to have the Firestore in a user's collection. And what we're going to do is maybe store the user ID. And that could be the unique ID for the actual document inside the collection. Right. So remember how uh, Firebase automatically creates those unique IDs for individual records. Well, what we could do is set our own unique ID and we could set that to be equal to the user ID over here. So then we're syncing those up. So it would look something like this. These two IDs would be the same. So if we're logged in, we know which record to query to get extra information. And that extra information could be a biography and we could have a paragraph or two or even just a line about that person or an age or something like that. So typically, you don't want to store all of this extra information about a user on Firebase Auth. Now, that might seem backwards logic at first when you're first looking at this, because you might think, well, does it not make sense to have all of the information in one single place and have that readily available to me when that user comes back and we have access to it inside the browser? And maybe, OK, yeah, that's why we have this information that, you know, the bare bones. But just think for a minute between every request that you'll make into Firebase for data and other things, then we're sending that information back and forth. So we might be unnecessarily sending a load of extra information, a biography, an age, maybe some other data as well, like links that they like or favorites or books that they read, depending on your application. And we're sending that back and forward all the time. And that's really unnecessary, right? We only might need this if we're outputting some kind of profile page or whatever. So the idea is to store any extra information inside a Firestore collection for a user with the user ID equal to the user ID of the authentication service. And that's what we're going to do in this video. All right, then. So what I'd like to do is when a new user signs up, we're going to see an extra field right here for a one line bio or biography. And when they sign up, first of all, we're going to use Firebase Authentication to create that user with the email address and the password. Then when we receive a success response from that, we're going to take the unique ID of that user that we've just created and we're going to create a new Firestore user document inside a user's collection with that same ID. And that document is going to contain a property called bio and it's going to be that one line bio and we're going to save that to that document. So now we have a Firestore document for that user and also an actual user using Firebase authentication, right? So let's first of all add that new field to this form. So if we go over to the HTML, I'm at the sign up modal right here. What I want to do is add this extra field just at the bottom above the button. And I've just pasted this in from my repo. It's just a div with a class of input field. Then we have an input of type text and an ID of sign up bio and a label for that right here as well. OK, so that is the HTML. And if we look at this in a browser, it's going to look something like this. OK, so now we need to go to the place in auth.js where we actually sign the user up. So first of all, we have an event listener submit, which prevents the default action. Then we get the email and the password and we use create user with email password to create that user. Then we get the credential back. And on that credential right there, we have access to an ID property. OK, and that's what we're going to use to create a new Firestore user document. So what I could do down here is say, OK, well, now what I want to do is return. And the reason we return it is so that we can tack on a dot then method at the end over here. We don't want to keep nesting then methods. We're going to return a promise, which is DB to access the database dot collection. And what we're going to do is go into the user's collection. Now, this doesn't exist at the minute, but it doesn't matter because when we go to save a new document to a collection that doesn't yet exist, Firestore automatically creates that collection for us, which is awesome. Anyway, previously we've used dot add to add a new document inside a collection. Now, when we do this 
Firebase automatically creates a unique ID for the document it creates in that collection. But this time around, we don't want to do that. We want to create our own document with a specific unique ID. And that ID is going to be the ID that we receive back on this credential. So instead of using the add method, what we can do is say dot doc and then pass in the ID here that we want to use. And that creates a document reference for us so that when we save to that document, it's going to auto create that ID for that document. I hope that makes sense. So what we're going to do is take the credential, then we access the user from that using the dot user property. We've seen this in the past. Then we can access the UID, the unique ID. So that's the ID now for the user that's just been created. So now we're getting a reference to that document with that ID inside the user's collection. It doesn't exist yet, but as soon as we set some fields on that, then it will be created. OK, so then how do we set fields on this? How do we set the biography field? Well, we use a method called set. And then inside here, we take in an object and that represents the object or the different properties that we want to set for this document. So we want to set a property called bio and that is going to be equal to sign up or rather sign up. Oops. Form. And then in square brackets, we want the. Sign up hyphen bio ID. That was the ID we gave to that particular input. OK, so we're grabbing that. Then we want the value from that field. So now what we're doing is going to this document, we're creating it and setting a property called bio on it. And now this document will have the same ID as the users. So they kind of connect to each other. They don't automatically connect to each other, but we know how to query the database and get a specific amount of data for a specific user with the ID. Anyway, since we've returned this right here, now down here, we can attach a dot then method because we're returning this whole thing like this. And when this is done, we can attach a dot then here and that fires a callback function. So let's tack that on. If we didn't return this, by the way, we could just tack on a dot then method here. But then we're starting to nest two levels deep and I don't particularly like that. So I'm going to return it, returns a promise overall here. Then we can attach a dot then method. So then this function is going to fire when we've successfully added this data to the collection. Right. So by this point, we've created the user and added this document to the user collection. So at this point, this is when we want to do all this stuff right here. We want to grab the modal, close it and reset the form. So let's cut that and paste it inside here. OK, so if we were to save this now, hopefully this should all work. We create the user. We create the user document inside the user's collection at the bio. Then we close the modal and reset the form. I hope that all makes sense. Now then, before we actually try this out and sign up, what I'd like to do is go to my Firestore rules, because remember, we commented this out before and we're only matching this now. Now we're going to be creating a new collection called users. So I want to uncomment this for now, just so that we can actually create that. All right. So we're going to publish those so that anyone can read and write other documents. This still applies to guides, but other collections and other documents we now can access and write to from the front end without any kind of authentication, which is good. So then let's go and try this out. So I'm going to log in and oh, not log in, rather sign up. So email address Sean at the net ninja uk. Choose password test one, two, three, four. A one line bio Zelda loving net ninja. All right. Oh, not Zelad. <laughs> I don't know what that is. So Zelda loving net ninja. So if I sign up now, hopefully we don't get any errors, but this doesn't look like it's working. So let's inspect. We do have an error. OK, so db.collection.onsnapshot.catch is not a function. And I figured out that that is because stupidly when we went to set up this snapshot right here to listen to the database in real time, we added a catch method. Now we can't actually do that instead of adding a catch method right here. This takes a second parameter, which is a function for any errors. So we'll do the same thing inside this callback. We'll log that to the console like so. And we'll get rid of that. And save that. And now that should work. That was my error. OK, so instead of attaching a dot catch method to this thing, we just do a callback function instead. OK, as a second parameter. Anyway, 
Now that's out of the way, if we take a look over here, I'm going to look inside the data just in case this worked. It did still work despite the error. So if we go to users, now we can see this ID right here and a bio. Now notice this ID. It starts with HQ and ends in A3. Okay, so let's see if that matches up to the ID of the new user we just created. And it does. Okay, so now we can see this thing right here has the same ID. Oops has the same ID as the document over here. So if we want to query this, dependent on the person that's logged in, we can do. We can query this document based on the user ID. So then, now this user has a biography. What I'm gonna do is go to authentication. I'm gonna delete the old one because that doesn't have a user record associated with it. And I'm just gonna keep this one, okay? Because that does have a bio now. Now what I'd like to do is over here, when I click on accounts, I want to output that one line bio underneath this. So what we need to do is go to that function, set up UI, because this is where we output this thing right here. And what we're going to do is just make a quick call to the database to get that document. So I'm going to say DB dot collection. And we want the users collection. Now, once we have that collection, we want a specific document. So we say doc to get that. And then we pass in the ID. Now we have access to the user, so we can just say user.uid to grab that. And because the document has the same ID, we're going to get a reference to that particular document inside the user's collection, which is cool. Then we're going to get it. So we say dot get. It's asynchronous, takes some time to complete. We tack on the then method, which fires a callback function when it's complete. We grab that document, which is received, and then we can do something with that. So what we're going to do is output the HTML inside here instead of down here. So let me just grab this stuff. In fact, let's grab this as well and paste it inside here. Now, this is DB, not debugger. OK, so then let me just scoot this in a bit. Then what we want to do is output the bio underneath this. So I'm going to do a div right here. Then I'm going to say dollar sign curly braces doc dot data, which is a method. That's how we get the data from a document. Remember, we've done that previously, dot bio. So we're getting that and we're outputting it right there inside the account. So let's save this now and view this in a browser. So if I go to account, now I see this one line bio right there. And we've been able to do that because we've queried the Firestore using the same ID to grab a specific document. And we've output that right there.